Okay, thanks for taking a look at uh, eNatal LT. Um, and this demonstration will show you the features, uh, although I don't think they're that hard to figure out. But anyway, um, you'll find the eNatal LT application uh, once you install it, uh, and you can go ahead and click on it. But before you do it the first time, I want you to make sure that you go to the settings um, application in uh, on your iPhone uh, in order to set up your username uh, because what you need to only put in as when you sign on is your password as you'll see in a second but we're, we're going to come to that later so I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, eNatal LT and it brings up uh, the sign on page and it says enter your password so I'm going to enter the password again there's no place for the username we're going to sign on and we come to a front desk of sorts and we have several options here. One is, do it, is to do a search. Uh, the other is to do an alphabetical listing. Another is to do a listing by EDD. And the info um, is a uh, kind of a help page and has links uh, uh, for support. Uh, basically the same links you use now. Um, so if we look at, and we started up in the search page, so we'll just go ahead and show you how that works. And I'll just type in, you have to type in at least uh, three letters. And we've got uh, four uh, uh, patients that have A and D in their name, with either first name or last name. So let's go to the alphabetical list and see what that looks like. Uh, alphabetical list with the index on the right, very much uh, similar to the contacts application. Um, on the iPhone. Uh, we'll go to the EDD list. Again, uh, you see the patient's uh, name, the gravity parity, her, and her EDD. And we can go look at, say, July of 09 and look at the patients uh, that are due during that month and, of course, uh, scroll through that. So if we go back to the search page, uh, we'll uh, again. Uh, search for Marlo Andrews. We'll click on her name. Um, you'll notice where it says still pregnant. Uh, this may mean uh, that you have some patients that are well past their due date and there will be a reminder whether they're still pregnant. But we'll go ahead and click on her name. And now we're in her chart. Her name is uh, at top and we have a list of options uh, in her chart that you can uh, scroll through. Uh, most of the important sections that are in eNatal um, are he represented here as well. The ones uh, that are navy uh, in color means there's information to look at uh, signified by the detail er uh, arrow. But notice like things like allergies, there are no allergies recorded for her. Now this is a rather arbitrary uh, order that uh, we thought the clinical summary ought to be first, test second, ultrasounds, and so on. But you notice there's an order button up here, which you can click, and now you've got grabbers here on the side, and actually you can change the order of the sections that are presented to you, and you can then save those uh, by clicking Done, um, and rearrange those uh, any way you would like. Um, I'm going to bring the clinical summary back up first and bring the risks down here. Um, but you can change that any way you want because there's a lot of uh, sections and you probably have your favorite. So um, to look at each individual section is as simple as uh, clicking. And the clinical summary basically is a very high level uh, summary of the patient or date of birth, uh, EDD, risks, problem, allergies, and medications and uh, that's about it. So we'll go back to the chart page, uh, look at the tests, and there the tests are alphabetically. Uh, there is no option at the present time to do this uh, by date. Um, comments, uh, values uh, are here, um, and you can scroll through until you find uh, the tests that you want to look at. Uh, same thing with ultrasounds. Uh, we have left more room here to put in more information uh, if you would have put in uh, in your patients. Now conception outcomes is a, another special case but you notice here's kind of a summary of the conception outcomes and but there's more detail areas so that mean arrows so that means you can click on it 
and uh, see even more detail uh, about that uh, particular outcome. Um, I forgot to mention that you do notice that there is a somewhat what we, I'd call a banner um, on every page that lists the gravity parity and her current gestational age. And in our demo system, um, she's like 43 weeks, 4 days, and that's why it uh, had shown uh, whether questioned whether she was still pregnant. Um, risks, um, a risk that show the risks with the uh, evidence uh, underneath and where they came from. Uh, problems are really the same, we'll show that. Uh, uh, medications, there's the medications. Um, uh, allergies, there are none. Uh, important dates, let me show you the flow sheet. Flow sheet is a very abbreviated uh, flow sheet uh, with only the weight, blood pressure, funnel height, and gestational age. And you may notice occasionally the two that the dates may have duplicate dates uh, at some point. Like here is 113, 113. This is kind of an artifact that two people entered uh, information on the same patient and may have overlapped. Uh, the information that they uh, put in. Um, history um, uh, looks like this, uh, almost identical to the history um, in the regular enatal. Uh, let me show you though the notes and the notes first of all shows you a list view and it signifies that you can dig in on an individual note by the arrow here on the right. So I'll go ahead and tap on there and there's the entire note with all the uh, notifications and review status and everything that uh, you would normally see in uh, the other uh, desktop application. Uh, the demographics uh, are uh, simply a list, uh, show all the demographics for the patient and, and there are the birth preferences. So that's basically it uh, as far as um, looking at an individual patient's chart um, and we have all these sections that you can order uh, any way you like um, and you can browse through them and see uh, uh, most of the information that you would have in the enatal record and you can rearrange the order. Um, if we go back uh, to the patients uh, tab again um, let me just show you the info at this stage. Uh, it's got our uh, support uh, uh, email address uh, as well as a direct line to me uh, and some tips uh, again primarily having to do with uh, connection issues. Um, so that's really kind of an overview so what I'm going to do is sign off as I would encourage you to always do with eNatal either the desktop or the uh, iPhone application so I'm going to sign off and I want to show you then, I'm going to quit the application and show you then the settings. So we'll go to the settings application uh, on the iPhone and then you need to scroll down, there's probably more than uh, what is here, to eNatal LT and then what you need to do is not change the eNatal URL uh, because that is a preset for you to our secure website and this is a demo website but you would need to go in and change um, your username um, so you don't have to enter that every time uh, you want to uh, sign on and again enatal is case uh, username and password are case sensitive and and so you need to be uh, sure that you have the proper case and if you have to use numbers you can always use the numbers on the keypad here below. So before you would ever start using eNatal LT you need to come to the settings application and enter in your own personal username and of course you'll be asked for the uh, password uh, when you actually uh, sign on right here. Um, thanks for taking a look at uh, eNatal LT.